Hello! Welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to work with multiband raster data and find out how we can plot an RGB image, both true color and false color composites, using Python and Matplotlib. For this tutorial I've downloaded some Landsat 8 data using Google Earth Engine. We can have a look at that in QGIS for now. Here it is, you can see it's just a small snippet of a larger scene just to speed up processing. And what we see here is already an RGB composite, so the exact same thing that we're going to try to plot in Python. We can have a quick look at the layer properties and go to Symbology. And here we have the bands that make up our current RGB display. So you can see as a red band I've put band 4, green band band 3 and blue band band 2. These correspond to the actual RGB bands of Landsat 8. Here is an official table of the Landsat 8 band designations from the USGS. Just to prove to you that I'm not telling any schmoo. So as I said, band 4, red band, band 3, green band and band 2 is Landsat 8's blue band. Okay, we also see we have 11 bands in total. But if we have a look at the information of my raster layer that I've loaded, you can see this has only 7 bands. How is that possible? Well, I just wanted to get rid of these four bands because some of them have a different resolution and I do not plan on visualizing them, so just that you don't get confused, the multiband raster that I have only contains these first seven bands. Okay, so much about my input data. Let's go to Python and try to plot it there. So the first thing that we need to do is to open the Lancet 8 scene and read in all the bands that we want to plot as an array. Now to do that I am going to use GDAL, but you could also use Rasterio or Raster.io if you prefer that. Besides GDAL, by the way, I've also imported NumPy to work with the arrays that we get from the raster bands and Matplotlib, of course, for visualizing everything. Okay, now as I said, as a first step I'm going to open the raster image using GDAL open and just putting in the file name of my data, which I've stored as a GeoTIFF file. If I run this, you can see we now have opened this scene as a GDAL dataset and from this GDAL dataset we can get individual bands. So let me get the red band first, just call that R, and then from my GDAL dataset I want to get a raster band and in here I have to put the number of the band that I want to get for red band that's band 4 and I want to read that as an array run that again and now you see we've gotten a new array and I do see many NAN values in here but don't worry there are also valid pixels in here if I just go to the side a bit and now that this worked out so nicely for the red band I'm just going to repeat the process for the green band and the blue band as well so I'll just copy that green band is band 3 and blue band is band 2. Read all of this and now we have three arrays from these three different raster bands that are all of the same size. We can close the GDAL dataset, don't need that anymore. And now let's think about visualization. You might already know that for displaying a two-dimensional regular raster we can use the matplotlib function imshow. So that would be, let me just create a new figure plt im show and here the input would just be an array so let's just take the red band for example and show everything run that and here's the output image and now that we have that we can also see where all of these nan values come from these are just these white spots around the edge of my image where we don't have any data so it's pretty easy to visualize a single band but what if we want to have a multi-band composite well, then we need to somehow combine the three arrays that we have of the three different bands into a single one that we could then pass to PLT imshow. Now, how to combine our arrays? We know that our three bands cover exactly the same area, so it wouldn't really make sense to put all of these arrays next to each other, but instead we want to put them on top of each other so that we have a three-dimensional array with the extent of our data in x and y direction on the first and the second axis and the RGB channels on a third axis. 
Putting different arrays on top of each other and thus perform a depthwise stacking can be achieved with the numpy function dstack. So let's use that to stack our raster bands. I will create a new variable, call that RGB. Now we call numpy dstack. And as an input, you can see dstack expects a tuple. So let's give it one and put our three band arrays, R, G, and B, in there. Okay, uh, let me run this bit of code. So now we've gotten a new array, and you can see it's not two-dimensional anymore, but instead it still has the same width and height as before, but now we can also see that it has a depth of three. So we have three arrays stacked on top of each other. Okay, great. Can we just plot this RGB array and we're done? Let's give it a try. So I'll replace the red band with RGB here and run this plotting part again. And we get this image, but that's not what we want. We are plotting something. You can see the image has the same width and height as before, and we can also see where we have no data values. But something is not going right here in the area where we have data in the RGB channels. So why is that? Well, the answer is pretty much given if we look at the console down here. You can see that my input data got clipped to a range between 0 and 1 for floats, which is the case right here, or a range between 0 and 255 if you were to use arrays of type integer. So is my input data within the valid range between 0 and 1? Certainly not. Let's just get a quick histogram of the value distribution within one of my arrays. So I will take the red band as an example, flatten that, and then just give me 50 bins or so. Bins, of course, sorry. Here we go. So for the red band, you can see my minimum value is here around 100 or so, and the maximum value is at about 2,220. And that is not even true. I just realized that the X scale extends much further, so the actual maximum value will be 3,000 and more. Anyhow, the point that I want to make is that these values are far greater than 1. So if my input data gets clipped to a range between 0 and 1, or pixels that have a value greater than that, which is every pixel in this case, will be signed the value 1. And if this happens for every band, so we have full intensity in the R, G and B channel, then we just get white. So that's what's happening. It is also nicely shown if I just bring the other figure up again. So you can see up here in this corner, when I scroll over the image, we see the values within the RGB channel. And you can see throughout my image, they just correspond to 1, 1, and 1. So for us, in order to see anything, what we need to do is to rescale our data so that all values fit within the valid range between 0 and 1. And how do we do that again, Wikipedia? Ah, so to perform a min-max normalization, we need to subtract from our original value the minimum value within our array and divide that by the maximum value minus the minimum value in our array. Easy as that. Let's implement it. I will create a new function. Call that scale min max or whatever you like. Our input is going to be an array. I will just call that x. And then we want to return the scaled array, and that is going to be equal to, remember the formula from earlier, x minus the minimum value of our array. To find that, I'm going to use numpy nan min, because we do have nan values in there. So when finding the minimum value, I want to ignore them. So minimum of our array divided by the maximum. Also here, I'm ignoring nan minus the minimum. So now we have this function to scale our data. Let's apply it to the individual arrays before we stack them. And see if this works out. It does. So here's our RGB image, and we can actually see something this time. And if we scroll over the figure, 
you can see the values within the R, G and B channel are now somewhere between 0 and 1. So that is great, but you might notice this image is kind of dark. At least it is not as easy to see the lake, for example, as it was when we looked at the raster in QGIS. So what is QGIS doing that the image appears so much brighter? Well, if we have a careful look at the symbology again and investigate the minimum and maximum value settings, you can see that these are set to a cumulative count cut, so not the actual minimum and maximum values of the raster, but instead the 2nd and 98th percentile. So that is great if the reflectance values within the individual bands are not evenly distributed, which is the case here if you think about the histogram again. We had very many low and very few high values there. And if we just set maximum intensity to that single high value, all other pixels are going to appear rather dark. If we would select the actual minimum and maximum values of the raster here and hit OK, you can see we get the same image as we do in Python. But I did like the cumulative count cut version better, so let's see if we can get that in Python as well. Again, we need to scale our data to minimum and maximum values, but this time our minimum and maximum will not be the actual minimum and maximum, but instead a percentile of our choice. If we want to get the same image as in QJS, we take the second and 98th percentile. So I'll copy the min-max scaling function from up here and rename that to scale cumulative count cut scale CCC. And then all we really need to do is to replace the actual minimum and maximum values with the second and 98th percentile. So I'm not using NAN min, but instead NAN percentile. Then we need to state which one we want second for minimum, 98th for maximum, and second for minimum again. Apply our cumulative count cut scalar to the bands again. Let me just copy that so that we can compare results. But instead here I'll take the other scalar that we have. and see what we get. So here's our figure, much nicer than the previous attempt and exactly what we've seen in QJS before. You can see I now get this message again that my input data is getting clipped to a valid range between 0 and 1 and that is because now our maximum value in the scaled array is not going to be 1 because we're a bit above that because we're not using the true maximum value but instead the 98th percentile. But that doesn't matter because that's just a really small fraction of pixels and these will just be assigned the maximum value of 1. QGIS offers another method of defining minimum and maximum and that is setting the minimum and maximum values to the mean plus or minus the standard deviation times a value. Here it's two, so let's see what that looks like. Nah, I like the cumulative count better, but we can get that as well in Python if you want to. Just take the function that we have, let's call it scale standard deviation, and now our minimum value is not going to be the actual minimum value, it's not going to be the second percentile, instead it's going to be the mean of a raster minus the standard deviation times 2. So nan mean minus numpy nan std times 2. Same thing for the maximum value, just that we're adding the standard deviation this time and then divide by the mean minus the standard deviation again. And I do have an unmatched bracket in here somewhere. Where is it? Ah, it's here. And I will just copy all of my code again to show you what it looks like. I know that is not great practice. Don't repeat so much code. So change the function name here to scale with the standard deviation and let's hope it works out. Ah, run everything. Here we go. 
So here are the three RGB composites of our Landsat image using different values as minimum and maximum. So I hope you understood the concept behind all of this. Am I missing something? Yes, I wanted to show you how to do false color composites, but that is super easy now that we're at this point. We just need to not put the actual RGB bands in the RGB channels, but instead some other bands that, for example, make it easier to distinguish vegetation. The band combination for that would be 5, 4, 3. So the near-infrared band and the red band, green band as red band and blue band as green band. Or if we want to look at urban areas, a good combination for that would be 7, 6 and 4 and see what that looks like. Here we go, so here's the urban false color composite and the one that highlights vegetation. And here is just the regular true color composite. So that is it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. To increase the usefulness, I will put the code in the description below. See you next time when I'm probably going to make a video on water body mapping. At least that was the original purpose when I downloaded this satellite image. I will see how that goes. Until then, bye bye.